Well, get ready, Andy. Here we go again. Say, Amos, something is wrong here. Yeah, say, Miss Alexander, play that thing again, will you? Oh, yeah, Amos, we is in the wrong... Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do that just once more, please. Andy, I know what that means. What? Good health to all from Rexall. The Amos and Andy Show with Ernestine Wade, Lou Lubin, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Will Wright, Wally Mayer, Mary Lansing... Jeff Alexander's music, and radio's all-time favorite, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Amos. Andy and me is very, very happy today. We are happy because our show is now being brought to you by 10,000 independent druggists. Yes, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy because we know Rexall products, and we know them very well. We have used them in our own homes regularly long before this pleasant association with Rexall took place. We hope that you, too, will visit your friendly Rexall druggist, because remember, every Rexall drug product is guaranteed to give satisfaction, or you may return it to the store where you bought it and get your money back. Well, the kingfish got the shock of his life last week. He found out that his wife, Sapphire, bought a layette, and he now knows the reason she left him. She's going to have a baby. Although Sapphire still refuses to talk to him, the kingfish is feeling his oath as a papa-to-be. Oh, I tell you, Andrew, this is the greatest thing that done ever happened to me. I'm going to have a little baby all my own, have another cigar, son. Oh, take it easy now, kingfish. I got two in my mouth already. I had inhaled this much smoke since the time I got my head caught in the steam press. And I are so thrilled about my papahood. I finally gonna have a baby. Yes, the old kingfish is gonna have a little sardine of his own. Yeah, well, that's great, all right. Uh, but tell me something, kingfish. How come you and Sapphire ain't never had no kids before? Well, then uh, we had a couple of pretty good reasons. Sapphire was always afraid the kid would look like her, and I was always afraid the kid would look like me. Yeah, that's right. Ain't no use having a kid that's only good looking on Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll tell you something, man. I'm going to mend my ways. I really going to be a father to this kid. I'm going to give my boy all the love and affection I was denied as a child. Oh, you had things pretty tough as a kid, huh? Tough. When I was six years old, I had to walk four miles to school. I got there late every day, and the teacher would beat me up. Then on my way home, the kids would beat me up. When I finally got home, my papa would beat me up for letting the kids beat me up. Hmm. And I was really a daily routine with me for six years. Holy smoke, that was awful. Yes, Andy, the happiest time of my childhood was when I fell in a 40-foot well and nobody found me for three days. Oh, I tell you, Andy, it's going to be different with my little boy. He's going to go to school and get himself an education. He's going to mount to something in this world. He's going to be everything that I ain't. Yeah, well, just what are you going to do for this kid when he arrives? You ain't got no money or nothing. Andy, uh, my little boy is going to be proud of me. I was going to be a changed man. I'm going to rise above my environment. I'm going to pull myself out of the depths. In short, I'm going to unbum myself. Yeah, I want my boy to have a daddy that he can be proud of. And when Sapphire see how hard I is trying, I know that she'll come back to me and bring my little darling with her. And do you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to get a job. Holy smokes, a job. I never thought you'd make the supreme sacrifice for the kid. Yes, Andy, there's a factory over by the river. Now, I was going over there and see if they can't put me to work. Yeah, you're going to work hard for your boy, huh, Kingsley? Oh, yes, Andy. I was going to watch him grow straight and strong, like a tree with its roots planted firmly in the soil, its branches reaching out to the sky like a great oak. Hmm. Who's going to deliver this kid, a baby doctor or a tree surgeon? Now, Mr. Stevens, you're seeking employment with our company? Oh, uh, yes, sir. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I want to get floored up, yes. Well, according to the records, I see you've never worked before. Oh, certainly. I has worked. Uh, I once had a big job with the railroad. Uh, I was an important man with the railroad. Uh, oh, you were an executive? Uh, no, uh, more in the construction end. A construction engineer? 
Oh, no, not exactly. Oh, a section hand. No, not quite a section hand. You see, when the rest of the crew was working on the rails, I used to stand up the tracks away, and when I spotted the train, it was my job to wave a red flag and holler, here she comes now. And you lost that job? Well, I didn't like to lose it, but one day while the fellows was working on the tracks, I sort of dozed off. And I woke up just in time to say, there she goes. But there was nobody around to hear me, you see. Uh, so right then and there, I resigned from the railroad business as fast as my legs were carrying away from there. That's why I left there. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens. We don't have anything for you. There just isn't an opening. Now, look, Mr. Uh, you got to put me to work. Uh, I know I ain't much, and I know I ain't got no experience, but, well, you see, my wife is going to have a baby, and I, I got to get a job so I can make my little boy proud of me, so it, well, so he can look up to his daddy. You got to do it for me, Mr. You've got it. Well, if your wife's having a baby, I uh, I understand how it is. <clears throat> I think we can find something for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm putting you in charge of our bituminous thermal output. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that sounds great. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's just the kind of thing I'll handle there. Now, if you tell me just where I'll find my office and the secretary, I'll be there bright and early tomorrow morning at 1030. Mr. Stevens, you won't need a secretary. As head of our thermal output, you'll be in the basement stoking five furnaces. How do you do, sir? They say that you is the man in charge of letting people in the college here at Columbia University. That's right. Now, well, my name is Stevens, and I is the big shot in charge of the thermal output over at the Higgins Manufacturing Company. I like to have my boy go to college here. <laughs> yeah, I want you to culture him up within an inch of his life. Oh, I see. And uh, just when would you want him to matriculate? Uh, excuse me for protruding, uh, when I want him to do... What, what, what's that again? You know, uh, when would you want him to matriculate? Well, any time he's ready, it's all right with me, but, uh, getting back to this college thing, uh, I want the boy to come here and be sharp enough, you see. Uh, yeah, yes, well, uh, let me ask you this. When he graduates, would you want him to get an A.B., a B.S., a M.A., or a Ph.D.? Well, if it's all the same with you, mister, I'd like to have to have him get a J.O.B., yeah, of all, I don't want him to be no B-U-M, you know. I... Yeah. Mr. Stevens, I don't seem to be able to understand you. Uh, I think as soon as you can, the best thing to do would be to bring your son in here. Uh, bring him in? Well, now, I'll bring him in as soon as I can, and you can talk to him, but I was afraid between the goo goo and the da da that he ain't going to make no more sense than I does. You see, mister, my son ain't born yet. Oh, well, Mr. Stevens, I think you're a little premature here. We don't register students until they're at least in high school. Why don't you come back there? Well, okay, but just keep the players open for him, because I want my boy to have the best. i got to get back to my job now, and his executive job is head of the bituminous uh, thermal output. Yeah, very well, Mr. Stevens. Over the way, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nearly forgot my shovel, didn't I? <laughs> You say you done got a job on everything, Kingfish? Yes, yeah, Andy. It ain't the best job in the world, but at least it'll keep a roof over our heads and provide my little baby with the necessities of life. Yeah. Well, I tell you the truth, Andy. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to work harder than I've ever done before in my life. Yeah, well, you know, I ain't never see you this serious about nothing before. Well, I got to be, Andy, because I know that reason Sapphire left me is because, well, she didn't want the baby to have no bum for a father. Yeah, well, you certainly are thrilled about this, Kingfish. And I got to hand it to you for going out and getting a job and trying to make a home for your little off sprout. Oh, I can't wait to tell Sapphire about me being a changed man. I wonder what the little mama is doing right now over in Brooklyn. I hope she's resting and taking care of herself. Because I know that they can't be far off. She's done already bought the layettes in the end. <laughs> Mama, ain't this lead we bought the sweetest thing you ever seen? It sure is, Sapphire. Oh, look at all them little nighties and everything. Yes, and we got plenty of equipment now. Crib, blankets, bassinets, bottles. You know, this is going to give us a nice income, and we can do it without that bomb husband of mine. Yes, Sapphire. Oh, this is a wonderful idea of yours, opening up a baby nursery. <laughs>
Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store name and who recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Rexall aspirin is a good example, for here's the aspirin tablet that, when swallowed with water, is ready to go to work for you even before it reaches your stomach. Yes, there's no faster-acting aspirin made. Ask for Rexall aspirin, because you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Fish, you say you ain't been able to get a hold of Sapphire over in Brooklyn, huh? No, Andy, every time I call up, a old lady answers the phone, won't let me talk to Sapphire. Hmm. And the thing that's got me all upset is the last time I called, I could have swore in the background I hear the baby cry. What is I going to do, Andy? My little boy might have been born already. Yeah, for all you know, your spitting image done already spit. And it's terrible not knowing what's going on. I don't even know if it's a boy or girl. I don't even know whether I was a papa or a mama. Oh, I tell you, Anna. Uh, well, Shorty the Barber, come in, Shorty. Hey, did you hear the news? The Kings has just had a baby. Well, that is the most wonderful... This is the greatest... I don't believe it. Uh, listen, Shorty, there ain't no way to talk to a man that just had a baby. My wife won't let me see the child. Won't even let me speak to me. Oh, I got to do something. I got to find some way to see my darling boy. Yeah, the Kingfish want to see his baby, but... Sapphire and the old lady then throw the iron curtain right down Flatbush Avenue. And ain't no way of pencil straightening it, neither. Yeah. Wait a minute, Chair. It's your baby just as much as it is Sapphire. She can't keep you, keep you from seeing the baby. Go over there and assert your rights. Be a man. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Andy, get your hat. We're going to penetrate the iron curtain via the Brighton Beach Express. Yeah. Now you're talking, Kingfish. After all, it's the father's peroxide to see his own baby. Yeah, come on, Andy. I can't wait to get over there and hold my little baby in my arms. Yeah, well, I'm going out right now and buy your baby a present, yeah, Kingfish. well, that's nice of you, Shorty. Please yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him one of them little fire engines. The kind with a big ladder that goes up and down. And a little hose that squirts real water. Oh, yeah, that's cute. But I'll say, he'll have so much fun playing with the hose that... He'll have so much fun squirting the water that he'll... He'll have so much fun with the ladder that... That he... I think I'll get one for myself. Baby, quiet down, quiet down. Now, that's a good baby. Go to sleep. How you doing, Sapphire? Well, Mama, that's the last of them. The rest is all taking a nap. I got some in here and some in the other room. Yes, this nursery is catching on fine. The babies are so cute. Hmm, they're all under two years old. Yes. You know, taking care of these other mother's children almost makes up for never having none of my own. Well, it's a good thing we didn't let George find out what we're doing here. That bum would find some way to chisel in on it. Well, Kingfish, here's your mother-in-law's house. Now, go on up to the door there and assert your rights as a father. Well, now, wait a minute, Anna. We can't be too hasty here. The last time I come over here with me and Sapphire had a fight, uh, I cut across the lawn and the old lady met me on the top step with a golf club. She let me have it with a mashy nibbling. I was back on the green and won. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess if you want to see your baby, you're going to have to rely on a flanking movement. Yeah, come on, Andy, around this way. Let's go around the side of the house here. Yeah. Yeah, around this way. Now, the room is on the ground floor, and here's a window kind of open. Andy. Andy, did you hear that? It's a baby. It's my boy. <laughs> yeah, the way he sounds, I think he spotted you coming. Andy, i got to see him. Help me up so I can peek in the window. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's it. Give me a push. Yeah. Over there against the wall, there's a crib. There's a baby in it. Andy, it's my little boy. Here, yeah, I'll get his attention. I'll tap on the window with my fingernail. Baby. Baby. It's your daddy. Goo, goo, goo. Da, da, da. It's daddy. Did you hear that, Andy? He spoke to me. Oh, Andy. Just a... Hey, wait a minute. What's wrong, baby? Andy, I just noticed against the wall, there's another crib. And there's a baby in it, too. 
He's had two of them. Holy mackerel. Well, I ain't surprised. They always have a lot of double-headers in Brooklyn. <laughs> no, two of them. Two little darlings, Andy. Just a... Hey, wait a minute. Andy, there's a crib against the other wall. There's a baby in that one, too. Holy mackerel. She's had triplets. My family coming in wholesale lots, Andy. Kingfish, you get down. Let me get up there and look, will you? Yeah, okay. I'll give you a boost. There you are. Yeah. Yeah, there are three of them there, sure enough. Oh, they are the cutest little... Uh-oh. What's wrong, Andy? Your mom-in-law just come in the room and she's carrying two more holy mackerel. Oh, me. I was on head quadrupeds. Quad Andy, and get down from there before the old gal spots you. Yeah, let me down here. Yeah, there, come on. Andy, let's get out of here and think this thing open. My heart is beating like a trip hammer. Andy, there's this is really something there. Besides the shock of all these kids, I'm going to have five mouths to feed. Yeah, that's a bad situation, all right. Almost as bad as the time my sister came home from the hospital and she had three new mouths to feed. Yeah, well, what's so terrible about that? There was only two babies. Oh. All right, Kingfish. Now, you lay still down on the bed. Amos, hurry up with that ice bag, will you? Yeah, uh, here it is, Andy. Here's the ice bag. Yeah. Now, there you is, Kingfish. That ought to help you. Oh, me five babies. No one will ever know what I've been through. Well, take it easy now. Take yeah, Kingfish, calm down. After all five children, why, this is a blessing. Amos, I'll hit you right in the face. Uh, got any plans what you're going to do, Kingfish? Oh, what can I do, Andy? I was only making $35 a week. I'll have five mouths to feed, five beds to make, five little babies to chain. I tell you, I'm going to have to get an octopus for a nurse. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. What are you getting out of bed for? Well, I'm getting up, fellas. I'm going over and see my lawyer, Calhoun. Calhoun? What you want with a lawyer for a time like this? Well, I don't know exactly, but I ought to be able to sue somebody for this. I don't know. <laughs> Now, here's your Rexall family druggist. Now that the sniffle and sore throat season is with us, I'm urging my customers to keep a bottle of Rexall MI-31 on hand. MI-31? Why? What does it do? Well, ma'am, I'll tell you. MI-31 is Rexall's amber-colored antiseptic with a three-way action. First, it's ideal for relieving the distress of simple sore throat because when used full strength, it kills contacted germs almost instantly. Yet it won't harm delicate throat membranes. Wonderful. My family can always use a good throat gargle. But that's not all. Due to its astringent and antiseptic action, MI-31 is also a dependable and refreshing mouthwash, plus a reliable breath deodorant. Sounds like touch is an antiseptic. Yes. And the name is M-31. Remember it. And remember, too, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. <laughs> Let me get in my lawyer's office here. Calhoun, I gotta see you about something right away. Did you study them lines? Is I busy? How can you ask that of a man who graduated from three of the biggest law schools in the country? A man who is known as one of the most brilliant attorneys in this state. A man whose clients are among the biggest industrialists in the country today. A coast I is busy. Hey, yeah, well, what are you doing? Marking a deck of cards. <laughs> Look, Calhoun, my wife has done had five little ones. Five little what? Five babies. Well, congratulations. And listen, Calhoun, the trouble is, how is I going to feed five babies? I got a job to pay me $35 a week, but that ain't enough to keep me in pablum. Now, wait a minute, dear. This is a big thing, five babies. A big thing for the country. Maybe you could work out a deal like Mr. Dion did. The government subsidized them like colleges does football players. Paid all expenses and everything. Yes, hey, that's right. I started getting some publicity on this thing. Ain't no telling what would happen. Yeah, the possibilities is unlimited. Endorsements, the movies, freak shows. This might be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, I guess this is a pretty wonderful thing. After all, I've always wanted children. Now I've got a whole family. I go home and call up Sapphire and tell her that as soon as she is able to get out of bed, I want her to come back to me. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about five children, Kingfish. My mom and papa had ten kids. 
I'll never forget. When the tenth baby was born, my papa went out and bought a big touring car. He used to take us all for a ride together. He used to go 60 miles an hour, whipping around curves and everything with the top down. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't there a chance of some of the kids bouncing out? That's why he always put the top down. Oh. Walk up to my apartment with me here, Andy. Yeah, you say you're going to call Sapphire and tell her to come home with the kids as soon as she's out of bed, huh? Yes, that's right, Andy. I want my babies home with me. All five of them. I tell you, if I let them stay around that mother-in-law of mine, they'll end up hating the whole human race. Yeah. Well, here's your apartment, Kingfish. I think it's a good idea you call him Sapphire, but I don't think she's going to be able to get home for a while yet. Yeah, I guess she's still coming for wrestling. Well, I'll see you, Andy. So long, old boy. Yeah, so long. So long. When my baby'll smile at me. Do, 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 do. Well, here's my key. Let me get in the door here. George, is that you? Sapphire! You was back. Now, don't get no ideas, George Stevens. I just come back for my trunk. Honey, what are you doing walking around? You ought to be taking it easy, my darling. What are you talking about? Honey, I know all about the five little babies. I done peeked through the window. Now, sit down, honey. I know you was exhausted. I know you was done in. But I ain't tired now, George. I'll admit it was pretty trying the first day, but after all, you can get used to anything. Yeah, well, that's my brave little darling already. Oh, I'm so proud of you, honey. It's really something, all right. Calhoun said that it ought to get into papers and everything. Well, as a matter of fact, George, I was even thinking of putting an ad in. Well, I don't know if I ought to go that far or not, honey. Uh, but look, honey, uh, now that this wonderful thing has done happen to us, you've got to come back to me. Uh, when I see them children, uh, I see the light. I as a different man. I've got a job and everything. George, I don't care what you have. I is through with you. And from now on, I'm going to get my support from these children. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought I could put them in the freak show first. Now, let me get some of that money. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. My trunk is packed, and I'm going back. Well, now, honey, look here. You can't stay away from me at a time like this. We need each other now. Honey, you've got to come back to me, please, honey, and bring them little darling babies with you. I want them babies here, I tell you. I want them right here. Oh, don't be ridiculous, George. I'm going. Oh, Sapphire. George, I can't leave Mother alone, and on top of that, I'm expecting two more babies in the morning. Two more babies? Yes, when I start something, I don't do no halfway job. Goodbye. Holy smoke, seven babies. Well, they say that George Washington was the father of his country, but I sure look like I was gaining on him fast. But seven babies? That can't be right. That's two above the world's record. There's something wrong here. I wonder what in the world... Uh, hello, George King's receiver speaking. Oh, it's you, you bum. Oh, hello, Mama dear. Is Sapphire still there? No, she just left for Brooklyn. Well, she better get back here in a hurry. I came from this whole nursery school by myself. Yeah, well, the thing to, uh, uh, excuse me, Mother-in-law, dear, but did you say something about a nursery school? That's right, and the mothers will be picking up their children in a half hour, and I want Sapphire back here. You mean to say them five children, uh, they belong to other people? That's right. Where do you think they were? Well, I thought they uh, the thing was, uh, I knew that I was... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, go soak your head, Baldy. Goodbye. Oh, me. How you like this? I done become a father and an orphan all in one day. Well, Andy, it sure was nice of you to come up here to my apartment and console me, boy. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kingfish, about you losing them five children that you never had. Yeah, well, I was really happy about it there for a while, Andy, when I thought they was my kids, but yeah. I can't see why Sapphire won't take care of anybody else's children. I can't see you getting worked up about them. No, if they ain't your own kids, they don't mean much. Yeah, Sapphire, out of a mind to be running around a nursery school with a bunch of squealing brats running around hollering and screaming. They drive a man out of his mind. Oh, I tell you, Andy. I wonder who that can be. Hello, George. Oh, Sapphire, you're back. Yes, George. When you found out about the nursery school and told me how much you love children, it melted my heart. Oh, Sapphire. Yes, I couldn't get over it when you pleaded with me to bring the nursery school back here, and I decided to do it. Bring them in, Mama. <laughs> Why 
Once more, here's your Rexall family druggist. During this winter weather, friends, be sure you're getting enough vitamins. One very easy way to do this is to supplement your daily diet with Plenamins, Rexall's famous multivitamin capsules. The daily dosage of Plenamins gives you ten important vitamins, plus the nutritional extras of liver concentrate and iron. What's more, Plenamins also contains a little sodium. So ask for Plenamins, P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S, at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Don't forget, folks, to visit your trusty drugstore. See See you you next Sunday. (laughs) For the woman in ten with sensitive skin... Get Tylenol hand cream. One woman in every ten has an extra sensitive, extra tender skin. And for that woman... (laughs) Get Tylenol hand cream. Like all of Tylenol's specially designed duty aids, it's hypoallergenic. Pure, mild, safe for most sensitive skin. It softens, beautifies, protects. For the woman in ten with sensitive skin, there's Caranome hand cream. At Rexall drugstores everywhere. Oh, no. Next Sunday at the same time when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show, which is written by Joe Conley, Bob Mosier, and Bob Ross. Stay tuned now for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program.